Welcome back. Uh, so I, I went through a lot of emotions today, didn't I? Uh, the, the Canucks game just had me way up here. This game didn't have that same level of... Um, it, it is interesting. I will say this. Am I rooting for the Oilers? Well, yeah. Uh, there are a few obvious reasons, but one of them is the Oilers do tend to want to play that up-tempo, fun style of hockey that's really enjoyable to watch, and the Kings don't. And what they did tonight was... What the Kings do that has been successful for them at times this season, but it wasn't successful for them tonight. And now they find themselves on the verge of potentially being eliminated. And then the question I would ask is, so if this style of hockey is the one that works, how did they end up on the verge of elimination and uh, they, they lost at their own game? So um, we may very well see Vancouver and Edmonton in the second round. I have so many reasons why I would really enjoy that. I've seen you, oh, your team would get killed in the second round. But they'd be in the second round. And there are a lot of teams that don't get out of the first round. Um, and the other side of it, too, was I had to chuckle, too, looking at these stats at the end of the game because I saw people saying, oh, well, Canucks aren't getting enough shots. They won't get out of the next round. Well, then neither will the Oilers. Both teams will lose in the second round somehow. I'm guessing Calgary somehow comes out of nowhere and wins it. Because the Oilers only had 13 shots in total tonight. That's it. So it wasn't a pretty one, but the Oilers proved tonight they can win a not pretty game. So it's Skinner versus Riddick in this one. Anderson has a screenshot that's kicked aside. Arvidsson has a rush that's defended. The Kings press two minutes in. Uh, Perry has a turnover chance that's saved. The shots are three to one for the Kings at three and a half minutes. And this is right around where the shot ratio would stay for the rest of the game. About three to one for the LA Kings. Uh, Kane has a rush chance to save. The Oilers press after. Kings are out there throwing some hits. They were definitely the ones that were hitting more than the Oilers. Uh, the Kings press at seven and a half minutes. Byfield's denied and close. The teams exchange rushes. The shots are eight to three for LA at nine minutes. Uh, teams trade turnovers after that. Uh, Grundstrom's hit on Kulak draws some cheers from the crowd. This crowd really wanted something to cheer for tonight. They were cheering for hits. There wasn't a whole lot else to cheer for. Nurse has a rush chance that's saved. England has a shot that's tipped wide as the Kings press. Things are pushy on a hold by Skinner. Uh, the Oilers press with uh, six and a half minutes left. There was a big hit by Doughty on Hyman. That draws some cheers as well. Uh, Kings press with five and a half minutes left. Arvidsson to Deno, near miss. Uh, Dreisaitl's denied on a net drive. Uh, McDavid then has a net drive that's blocked. So they're trying to get to that net. They just can't get there. Roy has a shot that's held as the Kings press uh, in the final minute and a half. Skinner is the reason this thing's 0-0. Uh, Kulak can't bury one in the closing seconds as the Oilers press. So it's scoreless after the first, but uh, a lot of that is because the Kings just aren't giving the Oilers shots, and uh, Skinner isn't allowing any of the shots for the Kings to go in the net. Second period, Kings press at a minute and a half. They're kept to the outside. Uh, I didn't write it for every time that happened tonight because... Would have been a very, very repetitive review. Uh, Fogel has a rush chance that's uh, saved. Kempe has a rush chance that's blocked out. Lewis has one that's held. Uh, Dayarnay, shot gets blocked. Kings rush the other way. There was a toe save on a rush chance by Byfield. One of the best saves by Skinner tonight. Uh, but the shots on net are only one apiece at six minutes. So, it, not a whole lot to report on when you got two shots six minutes in. Arvidsson has a rush that's defended. The fans call one. The referee doesn't. Not a huge feature of tonight's game. There was only two power plays in total. And really a pretty clean game overall. Kings are limiting chances, playing their game. Uh, Bouchard has a shot that's blocked. Ekholm then has a chance that's held. Campe stick dies on a rush chance. Eight, eight shots for the Oilers, 30 minutes into the game. And I thought that was noteworthy because I thought, well, they'll get more than eight in the second half of the game. No, they won't. Nope, they had less shots in the second half of the game than the first half. Uh, Anderson has a shot that saved the rebounds held. Uh, power play for the Oilers. These Canucks aren't getting out of that second round, I tell you. Uh, power play for the Oilers. First penalty of the game. I just love it when people say that, like, any Canuck fan everywhere is going to be, like, upset that the Canucks wouldn't get out of round two. Again, a lot of teams either don't make the playoffs or get out of the first round. But anyways, we'll get back to this. Um, so, Anderson has a shot at this held rebound held... Or, Shot, save, rebound, held. There we go. Uh, we then get a power play for the Oilers. It's the first penalty of the game, and it is the only time that the Kings gave the Oilers a power play. And the Oilers take that, that door, this opens just a little crack, and they, they bust it open. The ref's told that he sucks. It's the only time he called a penalty. Must have hurt his feelings, because he didn't give an Oilers, the Oilers a power play the rest of the game. 
probably told the coach, did you hear what they said about me? They said I suck. I'm hurt. I can't give you guys a power play the rest of the game. Bouchard fans on one. They cycle. Puck's cleared out. And then uh, on a one-timer, Bouchard scores uh, at 11.49 from Dreisaitl McDavid. I believe that's his first of the playoffs. I believe in the preview I talked about, I would probably do for a goal. Uh, Nurse then has a net drive this block. The Kings rush. The teams exchange rushes. Uh, Roy with a near miss and close. It felt like that goal kind of brought life to the game. Kind of forced the Kings to open things up. And what's interesting to me is, and we've talked about the style of hockey the Kings play, when it's a wide open back and forth style, the Kings have skill. They can absolutely play that way. I'm bewildered at deciding we're not going to play that style of hockey. We don't want those fast fast rush chances when they can actually do that. So uh, there's uh, teams exchange rushes, Roy near miss. Kings press in the final six minutes. Uh, Doughty has a net feed that's picked off. Shots are eight to six for the Kings with four minutes left. There's a post for Gavrikov. Kings press after that with two and a half minutes left. Fiala has a shot that's blocked. Honestly, and I put up here almost a perfect 40 minutes for the Kings. They have limited the Oilers to 10 shots. They have 20, but they're behind one nothing going into the third period. Third period, a good early flow. Uh, the Kings had the only shot on net three minutes in. Uh, good early flow usually means just no whistles, a lot of back and forth. Anderson has a net drive chance that's held. Moore has a sharp angle shot that's blocked as the Kings press. Lewis has a rush chance that's kicked aside. Byfield has a chance right off the faceoff, and that's held as well. Um, I didn't think there were a lot of grade A chances for the Kings in the third period. But when they did show up, uh, Skinner stood up to him. Uh, Kane has a wraparound chance that's held. The Kings press. Arvidsson has a wrist shot that's held. The Oilers press. They're kept to the outside. Arvidsson with a net feed that's picked off. With 11 minutes and 11 seconds left, the Kings get what would be their only power play of the game. They really needed to score on this. Well, they cycle. Then there's a shorthanded two-on-one. Uh, after that, the Kings the Kings defend that two on one, and then they're trying to get in. But the Oilers are preventing setup during that first minute. Second minute, they get, they get in, they cycle, and then it goes out, and they go offside trying to come back in. Uh, the power play is killed off. Really solid kill by the Oilers again. The only time it was needed tonight. Uh, dry sidles tonight and close. The Kings rush with seven and a half minutes left. The shots are twelve to two for the Kings, and then the shots just stopped. And the Oilers played the Kings style almost better than the Kings would. So the Kings press with six and a half minutes left. Fiala fires one wide. Remember, they have 12 shots here. They have 13 shots here. They had one shot hit the net in the final seven and a half minutes. Hyman has a rush chance that's defended. McDavid to Hyman near miss there. The Oilers with Kings style defense in the closing minutes. Clear it out. Don't let them set up. Have a wall at the blue line. And, and just make them beat us. Make them go through five guys. It just wasn't going to happen. Uh, Oilers doing that all the way through. The Kings timeouts called with 121 left. That was on an Oilers icing, so they pull the goalie as well. But by calling a timeout, you're also letting the Oilers defenders rest a little bit and discuss strategy. And then the Kings struggle to set up six on five. They don't really get chances. Uh, Dubois has a shot that's held. That's that 13th shot. That's as close as they get. The Oilers win what's kind of an ugly one. one nothing, but they go up three games to one. They're one win away from potentially meeting Vancouver or potentially one win away from meeting Edmonton. Uh, shots on net, 10-4 to four Kings in the first, 10-6 Kings in the second, 13-3 Kings in the third. Final shots, 33-13 to 13 for the Oilers. Power plays, 1-for-1 one for, one for the Oilers, 0-for-1 oh for, for the Kings. The hits, 41-27 to 27 for the Kings. Skinner. 33 saves for his first career playoff shutout. That was some fantastic goaltending. Uh, Riddick was fine. He wasn't busy. 12 saves on 13 shots. Um, I, I don't think switching out from Talbot to Riddick necessarily made a huge difference in the results of this game because Skinner wasn't allowing a goal. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always. And by all means, tell me. The Canucks won't get out of the second round. All right, fine. Then we get the Oilers in the conference final against potentially Colorado or Vegas. That could be a lot of fun. I'm fine with that. It's fine. Uh, but let me know your thoughts. Hit like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Thank you guys so much for all your support. It's been a long weekend. Going to catch up on some sleep tonight, at least a little bit. Uh, I still think these start times are, are a little bit late. Definitely a little bit late. I think you want to get more eyeballs on the, the games. And especially a game like this that was without a lot of prime chances. There may be some people who fell asleep watching it. It is possible. I've fallen asleep watching playoff hockey before. It's part of the reason I don't have a couch in here. I don't sit down ever in this room. I have nothing to sit on in this room. I just watch games uh, standing up. So 
Uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for all your support as always. Do hit like and subscribe. I will talk to you again soon.